Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Hashtag Behind Relationship Goals. I'm Fofo. And I'm Bones. All right, so today's podcast is brought to us by Oh, oh So Healthy. Healthy. Sponsored episode. Woo-hoo. What's up? Woo-hoo. What's up? Actually, so, so excited din. Kanina pa umaamoy dito ng mga products natin. But guys, if you guys can see our set, for those that are watching on oh, YouTube. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about our set. Because we <laughs> set the sign. Ikaw pa naman nag-ayos, Fofo. Yeah, we fixed this last night. We fixed it in advance. And then I completely forgot that I arranged everything. But I'm so proud of it. Especially because... Oh, so healthy has packaging that looks absolutely amazing. Like it's the gorgeous. colors just pop. And I think you might have noticed there are some bags here that are open because, like, while we were waiting or setting up, we're like, oh, let's try this. I haven't tried this flavor yet. Let's try this one. So, may mga bukas bukas na dito na mga products. Let's tell our viewers what is Oh So Healthy? What products do we have from them? Okay, so Oh So Healthy is a brand that has three flavors in one bite. Oh, so mm-hmm. papa. So right now they have Oso oh Healthy Fruit Crisps and Kimchi Crisps. Yeah. The quick story behind this is someone gave us one of these products. I think it was this sweet potato, yeah. mango, and banana variant. And this was during the time of ECQ. We munched on it, absolutely loved it. And then when things opened up, naging GCQ, we reached out and asked if they wanted to partner up with the podcast. And luckily, here we are now, and we're doing exactly that, simply because we had such a great experience with yeah. it. These fruit crisps are absolutely amazing. I think another thing that's also great about Oso oh Healthy is it's a proudly Pinoy product. So it's made in the Philippines using local ingredients. And of course, they also support the local farmers as well. So ako, if I look for brands that I want to support, it's definitely proudly Pinoy. Yeah, and I think the one more intriguing aspect of their product, which also was something that we noticed when we first encountered it, was that it's a low-calorie snack. We've shared before that especially during ECQ, we were super-duper health-conscious, trying to really get fit. Yes. And we were looking for, I guess, sweet snacks, but low, low in calorie, and this is exactly it. I think it's like 74 to 80 calories Yeah, per it depends serving. on the variant. But this one, like the guava one, I can see in the back, it's 76 calories, calories per serving. And there's no added sugar. All the sugars come directly from the fruit or vegetable itself. So it's a great and super healthy snack, but we'll talk more about that later on. In the meantime, you guys can follow them on IG and on Facebook. At I'm oh so healthy. Okay, and with that, we proceed with the podcast episode. And given that oh so healthy is our sponsor, the, the topic for today is also about health. Yeah, we haven't had a health episode yet, have we? No, we haven't. It's mostly just been about relationships, our finances, but we haven't really tackled on health, and especially at this time, na you know, naka lockdown tayo, naka GCQ naman tayo ngayon. But you know, there's a pandemic happening right now and health is of the utmost importance at this time and it hasn't really been something that we've talked about yet I think health has been adjusting health priorities have been adjusting Mm -hmm. for a lot of people nowadays because all of a sudden we're really thinking about it like are we safe or if ever we do get sick can we afford it because before parang mas happy go lucky but now that there's a pandemic around us all over the world we're really just forced to rethink all our health priorities Mm -hmm. and i think at this time it's like okay before i would just be like if i get sick i can just go to the hospital anytime but now you have to rethink all these things and re-strategize so definitely we're not health experts but i'm sure that each family or each couple has their own ways of staying healthy and we want to share with you guys today our ways of staying healthy during the pandemic i guess what became our new status quo when it comes to dealing with health concerns and health goals it's a work in progress like we're always learning as we go along so why don't we start off with um what are our health goals or what are fitness goals during this time I would like to start this off with the start of ECQ because that's when things really started to change. Okay. What was the foundation at that point? We were coming from our wedding. Oh my gosh, yes. And to be honest, we weren't that fit at huh? that point. 
We were not fit. Okay. Zero. Okay. Yeah. So Bonizi not is more honest now. Not fit at all. We were not fit. That was probably my blubberiest. Pudgiest. Blubberiest. Me also. But na lang magaling yung designer ko. Mukha kong ano. Baka if you look closely enough, you'd be like, ah, oh, buntis ba siya? Yeah. <laughs> like I had that pouch talaga. If you rewatch the wedding video when Bonizi and I were talking in the reception, you could see na medyo popping ang clothes namin. But of course, you might say, ay, bakit ganyan? Mukha naman silang okay. Of course, Each one of us has goals for ourselves. And it definitely wasn't a time that we felt healthy because we were eating anything that we wanted. Out. We weren't working out. So even if yung figures namin were of more of the slimmer side. We our, were pudgier than usual, than and, our usual. And we didn't feel healthy. Like we gotcha. felt very sluggish. We weren't, you know, conscious about what we would eat. So I would say that that was a very unhealthy point in our lives. Yeah, it was. And when ECQ first hit, we were all locked into our homes. Mm -hmm. Bonizi and I realized that, hey, this is the best opportunity for us to, you know, reevaluate and reassess our health goals and our health habits. Yeah. We renewed a commitment to being more fit, especially because being fit is one of the best ways to keep your immune system strong. Yeah, it is. Which is important nowadays, obviously. Um, so what did we do? What were the couple what are what were a couple of things that we did in terms of fitness and in terms of food? Okay, so let's start off first with working out. And if you hear the word workout, I'm sure nakakatakot. Nakakatakot talaga pakinggan because you're like, okay, maybe I'll start today, maybe I'll start tomorrow, or maybe next week after, you know, we've done that family reunion and we're done with that whole like binging out and binging on eating. So it gets scary. But I think the first advice before that we get into like what we do is to just do it. You just have to go I was in gonna say that. and just Try it out. You know, I mean, you're not going to know unless you actually participate in doing the workout. You don't have to go all in like 110%. Try it out. See what works for your body, diba? Right? Okay, before I get into my story, I want to touch on what you just said. Um, I, I wholeheartedly agree with Bonizi saying that just do it when you want to work out. Because my tendency talaga for everyone, even ourselves, to procrastinate mm -hmm. and say, Oh wait, I'll put this off. Maybe tomorrow. Parang um, mag-enjoy muna ako today with my food. And that's normal because working out hurts. Working out is tiring. Yes. Lifting weights is heavy. So may ano talaga? Eh, you really have this predisposition to kind of say, "Oh, I don't want to do this just yet." But the best way to combat that is not the plan. It just go for it. Like yeah. if you say you're gonna work out, like work out right now. Like, put this microphone down and just start working out. Atara, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um, for me, one of the challenges that I had was that I'm usually a gym person. So I go to the gym, I lift weights, I shoot around with the basketball to warm up. So I had to adapt my whole workout routine and basically getting prepared to work out to adjust mm -hmm. here at home. Yeah. And what happened there was... I had to figure out, okay, what can I do that will make me feel like I'm actually putting in some work? Because, of course, home workouts, ang layu sa gym workouts. Yeah. In the gym, I'm lifting heavy. Um, sometimes my spotter, sometimes my trainer. Pag home workouts, the biggest difference for me is that sariling si kap talaga. Uh oh. -uh. Not only is it uh, having to be creative with your routines, but it's also the discipline of doing it and putting in extra effort so that it's actually getting your body to work. I think another thing is that when you're at the gym, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but when you're surrounded with other people and you see them working out, I don't know about you, but I feel competitive. Because okay, that if, my I, factor, yeah, yeah. if I see other people, I'm like, oh, wow, kaya niya yun. I should be able to do that eventually. Or you're like, oh, I have to make sure that my form is is good because people are watching. Nakakaya naman if, if you know, I do something wrong or I injure myself. So there's that kind of atmosphere of competitiveness when you're at the gym. And when you're at home, if Fofo is doing something else and it's just me working out, I'm like, well, nobody else is seeing me, so why should I even be doing this? So parang there's that voice at the back of my head telling me this. So it seems, Bones, that the main challenge natin when it comes to coming up with a new fitness routine mm -hmm. na bagay for the house is motivation. Motivation is definitely number one. If you're not motivated to work out, then 
Oh gosh, it's gonna be an uphill battle. Yeah, so I, if I think about it, I have a couple of stories to share that really helped motivate me and Bonizi. The first one would be looking for workout challenges. And I know that the very first workout challenge that I did was a push-up challenge. And I saw it on YouTube and this guy was saying in 21 days, you do this push-up challenge and you can double your max push-ups. So what was what was like the quick breakdown of the push-up challenge? On the very first day, you check out how many push-ups you can do in one go, in one set. Okay. And I could do 15 at that point. Okay. And the goal was to hit 30 straight push-ups at the end of 21 days. Okay, now you can not stop for one yeah. set. Okay. So this guy was going to give us a program and all I had to do was follow it every day. And it took, what, 15 minutes maximum. Okay. So I was like, okay, it's to sustainable. To. Some people kasi, might go for like one hour workouts, 45 minute workouts. I knew that I needed short, quick bursts. If not, I'm going to Okay. So I was looking for that sustainability and I was able to finish it. I was able to go 21 straight days and at the end of it, my maximum push-ups in one set was 35 reps. What? So you went from 15 to 35 in 21 days? In 21 days. Ito yung hassle lang. I stopped doing push-ups for like two weeks after that. And then bumagsak. But my maximum rep count is now higher now. It's 20. So even if I don't work out or I don't do push-ups for like a week or two weeks, when I get back to doing push-ups... I was automatically able to do a bit more than my previous best. Hey, that's cool because the boss said nila, it takes 21 days to create a habit. Oh yeah, so I guess right? that's why that was one factor I guess to his workout program. That is so cool. So definitely challenge. So um, workout challenges help because it gives you a goal. And the second one is workout length. So mm-hmm. I started really small, so really short, 15-minute bursts. Some people might think baliwalayon, but if you're able to do it every day, it will really help, and it'll actually really, uh, you will really see the changes over time. And the third one is, sana you're in an environment of people who also want to work out. So during that that's time, a plus. That's definitely I was a plus. with Nikki, Mauro, and Sandro, and then Sel and Meng. All five of them were also working out, and when you see other people work out. Of course, you have to let them finish because there's no space here in the house. Yeah. But you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to work out too. Or when I work out, you see that they're motivated. They're like, okay, even if I'm tired, I'm going to work out. So that environment of wanting to stay healthy definitely helped motivate everybody here. I like that. I like that, definitely. Like, I was definitely motivated by Cell and Meng. So Cell and Meng are the ladies, our lovely ladies who stay with us at home. Uh, they help us around the house. But one thing that I noticed was that they run every afternoon mm-hmm. and they run for about an hour or so. So pag akit nila sa kondo, they're like, uh, super pagod na, but they feel so good. And it even came to a point that Cell was joining like these challenges on like the like the marathon app she was a part of. And she was like, Ate Meg, look, I ran like, 50 kilometers in like X amount of days. I'm like, what girl? Are you serious? And it was just so motivating for me because she was making an extra effort to also take care of herself during ECQ. And wala, na super na inspire ako sa kanya. And at the that. same time, just a quick note, this was the very first time that they became active with their fitness mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. their whole lives. So kahit sila nadamay sila, na influence sila, and nung na influence sila, na motivate kami. So it was like a nice cycle of sharing motivation. And I also remember, like, so na inspire ako sa running ni, ni Lasel and Meng. And when I would do my workouts, I would do like burpees in my workouts, and Cell and Meng would just like watch me like from the room because I would work out in the room sometimes and we're like oh why are you watching me they're like I'm so curious like it looks so interesting seeing you work out they said I want to try it too so after that Cell joined a burpee challenge and she actually won that burpee challenge so what challenge do you have okay so the challenges that I had in terms of working out was that I was so used to a trainer before I was used to people crafting workouts for me. I would do Pilates classes where I had a trainer and just follow suit. But syempre, during ECQ, I didn't exactly have that. And all I had was the four corners of the house and whatever workout, I guess, gear that we had at home. But I was able to adjust because I actually have an app 
that I had been using on and off. And this app crafted the workouts for me so all i had to do was check what day it was and follow that workout the app is called the sweat app by kayla itzines i hope i said that right but all i had to do was follow that and choose what type of program that i wanted if if i wanted something now all body weight because i didn't have stuff at home i could do that if i wanted something the yoga they also had a yoga program but what i did was i followed a workout that was about strength because i felt like i needed to strengthen my body because aanhin mo naman ang payat na katawan ko Wala naman lakas if I can't even like lift stuff around the house. So that's the program that I actually did. And I think it really helped because it's nice to have something crafted na in the app that you just look at. And without having to think of, oh, what workout am I going to do today? I guess I'm that type of uh, working out person. Yeah, no, it helps that you have programs online and on your phone to access and help you just get into a workout without thinking, okay, what exercise am I yeah. going to do? How many reps am I going to do? How many sets am I going to do? Most people don't want to concern themselves with that. And there are so many resources available online now. So, sakto lang rin na, at least nung nag-ECQ tayo, there's so much material na that you can find. Mm-mm. And to that point, I'd like to share some of the other things that we've done. So the other programs and YouTube channels that we follow are one, Athlean X, yeah. which I absolutely love. The host there is great. Yeah. He's great. And there are so many followers and subscribers on that channel. Um, the other one is Hasfit. So Hasfit is more yeah. of a hit type program. So if we want to burn a bit of fat and have longer workouts, then I follow those programs. Yun yung parang cardio na ginagawa yeah. natin. And then the third one, the third app that I'm using is my current program. So there's this guy called PJF Performance. He's actually a trainer for NBA players. And I purchased his program online and he has an app. Mm-hmm. So the main goal of this program is to increase your vertical jump height. Okay. Of course, hindi naman talaga ako athlete. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just fun because it's mga workouts and masaya jumping around. Like I enjoy that kind of workout. So just jumping around and then uh, parang jogging in place yeah. and then short bursts, explosive movements. So y- it's nice to be able to try out different workouts, different things. I don't mind paying for them because people yeah. also put their blood, sweat, and tears and their knowledge into sharing these workouts. Yeah, I, ako, I pay for the sweat app. There's like a monthly um, fee. And it's actually cheaper than getting a trainer. But aside from that, there are so many programs that I can choose from. And like Mikael said, it's the years that they put into their work, the amount of effort that they put into their work. So I don't mind paying for that. So that's Mikael and I's experience about working out at home. But if you're out there and you're like, oh, I don't even have like a yoga mat or anything, use things around the home or around your house that you could possibly use for your workout. One tip is, yes, you can use a towel as your mat. Number two is you can fill up water bottles with rocks and you can make that your weights. So I think that we did that on one of our trips, though. (laughs) We probably did that on one of our trips. Or to be honest with you, there are so many no-equipment workouts on YouTube. Yeah, no-equipment workouts. I mean, si Bonizi, he's going to be able to do this. He wants his effort. He's going to be able to do it. You can put it in the house. Empty water bottle. (laughs) But I've done a lot of no-equipment workouts. And literally, that's what you type on YouTube. And ang gagaling ng mga tao, there's so many YouTube yeah. channels dedicated to fitness workouts that don't require equipment. And ang galing talaga, nakakamangha. But just check those out and definitely just try to look for a workout that fits, I guess that fits your body type, that fits what you like doing, and that fits your movements. All right, and today's podcast is sponsored by Oh So Healthy. If you guys haven't seen it yet, I'm bringing it up close and personal for those watching on YouTube. A lot of people say that the products look imported, so it looks like a product that isn't made from the Philippines, but it is proudly Pinoy. And everything inside is made from real fruits and vegetables. Hindi, walang halong chemical. Yeah, so not only is it a convenient snacking option, but there's no need to peel, Mm -hmm. and there's no need to slice. Slice fruits. So I think what they do here is that 
from my understanding, I'm just guessing, it seems like they puree it and then they they dry it. Parang dehydrated fruits yung dating niya sa akin. Yeah, you know? yeah. Ganun nga yung dating niya. It has a nice, fun, gummy texture as you start chewing into it. Oh, I love it. I and love I it. I know Bonizi loves that. Bonizi, I love that. Bo- Bonizi is a, is a bilo bilo person. Yeah. And it feels like, I don't know, like it has that feel afterwards. But another tidbit that you guys might want to know is that it's also certified halal and vegan. So for those who look for those qualities in food, mm-hmm. then at least you know that and it might fit whatever your needs you have. All right. And something that is super fun about this episode is that we are actually having our first giveaway on the podcast. Is it our first? Oh, yeah. It is on our first podcast. giveaway. Our so first, first giveaway. podcast giveaway happening Woo-hoo. right Woo-hoo. now. Woo-hoo. Okay. First thing you guys have to do is follow Oh So Healthy. Follow the IG and FB pages at I'm Oh So Healthy. Mm-hmm. And then you have to answer this question in the comment section of this video. The question is, if you could create your own Oh So Healthy flavor, what would it be and why? The more creative, the better. Oh So Healthy will select five winners. So, abangan na lang ang mga winners sa social media pages nila because Oh So Healthy will get in touch with them through FB or IG. And here's the thing, when you answer that question, don't be afraid to get super duper creative, okay? Here's an example first. Okay, my favorite variant of Oh So Healthy is the mango sweet mm-hmm. potato plus banana. Okay, and then mine is the kimchi crisp. I first tried this at the gym. And remember, do you remember that time we ordered the chips? And then I was like, ooh, kimchi flavor. So this one is real kimchi turned crispy. And I super love it. It's super, I love it. It's Give so them good. another combo that they have. Oh, oh, this is my second favorite one. This is the one that's open. I was munching on it yesterday. It's the guava Purple yam and banana. Okay. So just an example of an answer you can give. Na isip ko lang to, ah. Bakit naman hindi? It could go bad. It could go good. But tosilog. Oh, so healthy tosilog. Tosino sinangag an egg in a nice uh, snack form. So yeah. <laughs> of course, you guys can get more creative than that. So what pairings would you guys have? Or I think okay to okay to. Um, suman. Oh. Mango and gata. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good. That sounds so oh good. Gosh. So get creative. We will also choose based on your justification. So the <laughs> funner it sounds, the more nakakaaliw it sounds, I think there's a higher chance that we might pick your um, that oh so healthy your suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and of course the winners will all get Oh, so healthy fruit crisp. So exciting yan, assorted yan. Kung ikaw yung manalo, you guys, you guys, you guys will have your own crisp also. All right, and we move back to the podcast. So we're done talking with our workouts and our fitness routines. Now let's move on to 80% of the battle. So you hear all these proportions mm-hmm. of trying to get fit. They say uh, the battle is 20% workouts, 80% in the kitchen. Or it always varies. Sometimes yeah. some bit, some say 10%, 90%, Mm-mm. and then 50, 50, or 40, 60. But the main point here is that a huge chunk of your fitness is also dependent on how well your diet goes. Yeah. So sabi nila, anhin mo yung workout mo kung hindi ka naman kumakain ng tama. So here we are going to share our, I guess, food habits and diet hacks if there are any for us to share because I find it interesting. I always mm-hmm. find it interesting. I always search like, what is Chris Hemsworth's diet plan? Or The Rock. All, we watched The Rock, what he ate in a day. Or what exactly does The Rock eat in one day? I find it so interesting because these guys and girls like yeah. Gal Gadot, they have amazing bodies, amazing physiques, and you always wonder, ano kaya yung kinakain nila? Mm-mm, like, what do they have to go through to attain these bodies? Okay, so Bonizo, where do we start with our health uh, food habits? Okay, let's start first with how we eat. Okay, how do we eat? Okay, can I talk about you first? Okay, go. <laughs> it's so funny, I'm talking about you for your habits. Mikael can eat the same thing every day, at hindi siya magsasawa. I have eaten the same breakfast every day for the past eight months. Hindi siya nagsasawa. Kahit yun lang ang kainin niya, okay siya. So, if Mikael had to follow a diet plan, he would not have a problem with it. He, hindi siya magsasawa at all. Okay, so what I eat is I eat chicken breast um, marinated in a curry sauce 
and potatoes. That's it. And two eggs, by the way. So that is my breakfast. That's been my breakfast for 99% of the past eight months. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with it because I realize, I don't know, when I think about it, kasi, if you think about all the food that you eat in one year, taking away restaurant food, ah, you pretty much eat the same thing anyway. Yeah. Parang it revolves around just a handful or two hands full of, ki- of dishes. And yun na yun. And I think it's all mental na nagsasawa yung mga tao. But when you think about it, pare-pareho lang naman eh. The things your mom cooks for you over the past 10 years, dude, pare-pareho lang siya, di ba? It's just in rotation. Yeah. Okay. Well, for me naman, do you have an idea of me? Don't you eat the same thing as well? I eat the same thing, but I have more fruit, fruit, fruits, more food that goes in rotation. So I rotate it a bit more. Okay, so what has been your breakfast dishes for the past eight months? Okay, so number one would be eggs and rice. Okay. Okay, so that's my And as in literally, yun lang yun. She has half a cup of rice and a fried egg. Two and then eggs. she just eats that. Yeah, yun lang. And then I'll have coffee also in the morning. And then my second kind of breakfast is I have oatmeal and then I'll just mix up the toppings. Sometimes I'll have like peanut butter and jelly <laughs> with my oatmeal or I'll have fruits and honey. So that's basically my breakfast usually. For lunch and dinner, it's still chicken breast and it's still potatoes. I eat the same thing. <laughs> I eat the Actually, same. you need more gulay nga eh. I do, I do. You need I more do. vegetables. Okay, but there's a reason why I got into this habit of eating the same thing, especially for 2020. Okay. The thing is, when ECQ hit, nagkaroon ng panic buying in the grocery. So, nagkaubusan ng meat. So, we tried to look for the most accessible meat and that was chicken breast. And yeah, and, and so easiest, that we didn't have to buy too many different things, we decided, okay, our meat in the house is chicken. And then my carbs is just potatoes or rice. Mm-hmm. So, malakas mag-rice yung mga kapatid ko. So, they ate the rice and I just ate the potatoes. And it was just so easy. You had to order three things and then buhay ka na for the whole ECQ. Yeah, yeah. And I guess na carry over yun because I realized that in terms of calorie counting, pasok siya and I felt very full and I felt happy naman. I felt yeah. satisfied. Like, I think people go through diets and people get depressed because halos wala nang lasa. Pero ako, may curry sauce lang. Happy na ako eh. May anghang lang ng konte, parang oh, okay, satisfied na ako dito. Yeah, I think also food kasi brings happiness to a lot of other people. So if they're put in a situation na oh, I have to diet, then it's gonna be difficult for them because their source of happiness is food. For me, naman before the ECQ happened, I was actually on a diet meal plan. Diba? Like I was ordering food through um, parang meal prep service. So they send it to your house and everything is prepared. All you have to do is reheat it the next day or when you have to eat it. And that was convenient for me because we were always on the go at that time. We were always going out and working. If we were on location, everything would be prepared na. So that quickly went away once you know the ECQ started. And I started eating exactly what Mikael was eating. <laughs> but I decided, okay, I think I need more variety. Kasi nasanay ako dun sa meal plans na every day it was like a different kind of meal. It was a different kind of cuisine. So, wow, social cuisine. I had a lot more variety. So I decided, okay, if I'm going to be just eating chicken like Mikael, baka ako naman yung malungkot, di ba? Kasi hindi ako sanay ng ganon. So I decided, okay, I need some fish up in here. And then it eventually became na we started cooking ulam at home because Mikael said, I need more vegetables in my diet. So we started thinking of different uh, ulam that we could eat for the next couple of days and just like ref it and reheat it eventually. Okay, so now that we've shared a bit of what we actually eat, I also want to talk about our food goals, Bones. Mm -hmm. So another thing that we did for 2020 was we decided to kind of count our calories. So we started off the year as a bit pudgy and definitely over (laughs) our regular weight. I started 2020 weighing around 178, 179 pounds. But at my fittest or at my when I'm ex- when I'm active at the gym my weight is usually around 168 160 yeah 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 so I was 10 pounds overweight how about you bones I was 135 pounds during our wedding and what's your fit weight my fit weight is 125 to 127 so also around 10 pounds overweight ish yeah 
Okay, so we wanted to hit that weight level again, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we wanted to trim some fat and build more muscle. But we wanted to do, do we wanted to do it in a healthy manner. So we were looking online, and they said that maybe like a pound a week is safe. Kahit even a bit slower, okay lang sa akin. Kasi hindi naman kami nagmamadali. I mean, we're all still somewhat in quarantine, mm-hmm. general community yeah. quarantine. So we decided, okay, let's take our time. So let's just slowly decrease our fat over time. Yeah. So what we did was we had to count our calories just to figure out how much do we really need to eat. So after watching a lot of videos about it, I came to, we came to the conclusion that, okay, there's this super easy way of calculating how many calories you need. And it's your body weight in pounds okay. times 12 to 15. You just have to pick a multiplier. So body weight in pounds times... 12 to 15. It depends on what number you want to put, pick. If you feel your metabolism is a bit high, pick the higher range, parang 14 or 15. Okay. Kung medyo mabagal, pick the lower range, 12 mm-hmm. or 13. So what I ended up with was I picked 2,400 calories a day. So I did that for one month while working out consistently. Mm-hmm. And I realized that I wasn't losing any weight. Yeah. I realized I was only, I, I was maintaining. I was staying at around 176, 177 for around three weeks. So what I did was, oh, okay, maybe my metabolism is a lot slower nowadays. So I just cut it down by 100. I went to three. Same, same. So cutting it down by 100 is literally just taking like a third r- of rice out. Or half a cup of yeah, rice out yeah. of your meal. It's not bad. Or taking one one cookie out. I, I eat a lot of presto. Yeah. <laughs> so every day I eat a, th- a pack of three presto cookies. And all I did was take out two cookies. So I gave one cookie to my brother and one cookie to Megan. <laughs> so that would be my snack na. Oh. And then eventually, it was just a cycle of monitoring and testing Mm-mm. a certain calorie, caloric value. But so whatever tried, would work. I tried two, four. It was okay. I tried two, three, and I started losing a bit. And then two, two, and then I started losing faster. And then I said around two, one to two, two. So 2,100 yeah. to 2,200 calories is my sweet spot. And I have to be working out for at least 15 minutes, five times a week. Okay. And then I would slowly lose. It was super healthy. Mabagal siya. Don't get me wrong. Like after one month of doing it, wala masyadong difference. Natanggal lang yung bloat. Pero may taba pa rin talaga. Okay, so I think something that people also need to realize is losing weight shouldn't be a fast process. If you want to do it healthy and if you want to do it the right way, it will take time. So if you don't see anything after a month, that's fine. Kasi ang sinasabi ng ibang trainers na kilala ko, you'll start seeing things after three to four months. And that's if you do it continuously. So it really is something that you need to commit to. It's something that you need to be aware of. And it's nice to take down notes or have apps that take down notes for you. For, yes, sorry, go lang, go. Um, I also realized that when you've accepted the fact that medyo matagal talaga yung uh, weight loss and muscle gaining process, you don't get impatient. Yeah. Some people, kasi gusto nila super bilis. Uy, in one month. Kasi baka nagahabol sila ng beach trip. Mm-mm. So yung okay dito na we were stuck at home was that tinanggal yung pressure na, uy, kailangan by this date super sexy na ako or parang by this date, eto yung weight ko. So yung nangyari dun is parang naging lifestyle change na lang siya. Someone told me one time, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be working out just because there's a beach trip. You should work out as if every day there's going to be a beach trip. <laughs> True, but diba? like, every day of the year, you never know when you're gonna go to the beach, especially in the Philippines. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I was also ready na hindi ko magagawa tuloy tuloy. So I think I had a three month stint of eating extremely well and following my caloric diet. Mm-hmm. But as soon as bumalik na yung mga food deliveries, I ate a little bit more and I enjoyed. Pero what I did there was may monitor ko lang. I had, I'd have one week of really just eating all out, still working out. The next week, bawi ako. I'll eat healthy na again. So, I, binabalance ko lang. So, bumagal. Bumagal in yeah. fairness. Ha. So, from 178, I hit around 168. 
right away. Wow. After like three right months. Away. But now I'm back to around 172 because I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. Maraming nagsasend na ngayon ng pagkain. We're also helping out small businesses. Mm-hmm. We're also ordering and giving into our food cravings. So now I'm at 172 and nagahanap lang ako ng bagong norm para sa akin na papasok. I think we're kind of the same because during our wedding, uh, I was 135. And then after four months maybe i think it was just before gcq happened i was like oh my gosh i lost 10 pounds already i hadn't even noticed because tuloy tuloy lang tayo sa workout and then we were just eating healthily and then all of a sudden gcq happened i was like oh man i am going to enjoy so i really took a break guys like i fofo noticed that i stopped working out um that i started eating just anything that I wanted to. He called me out though. He was like, hey Bones, don't forget, work out. Ganyan. So may mga reminder siya para at least I don't completely let go. It's normal talaga that you suddenly feel na break muna ako sa diet, break muna ako sa fitness routine and it helps talaga when you have a significant other or someone close to you or someone with you at home to say, okay, itama na yan, nag-enjoy ka na. Balik na tayo dito sa mm-hmm. fitness routine natin. It's Kasi nice to have that, ano, that support system talaga. Like Tama. That. So not only do you need motivation for yourself, but nakakatulong rin when you have people around you who will remind you to get back to that motivated yeah. uh, state. Okay, so speaking of food, of course, we've enjoyed a lot of good food over the ECQ, but we have had mishaps. I have had a mishap. Okay, so ito yung kwento. I'll start it off and then yes. you can finish it. So as I mentioned, we enjoy kami sa small businesses. We're ordering from them. Naglalabasan ng secret recipe. Lahat na mga Pinoy, Mm-mm. the best adobo, the best ube, ube cheese pandesal, yeah. the best lasagna. So kami, we're also very happy because we have a platform where we can also help out these small businesses. Mm-mm. So we order. And people message us and say, Uy, Mikael, Megan, meron kaming ganito. Yeah. So kami, kung feel namin, uh, if, and if it's a uh, food that we like, we'll go ahead and order. However, my pitfall rin pala yon. So one time, we ordered this dish which looked amazing. And it was a rice-topping dish. It arrived. I tried it. It tasted so good. It was good. so good. Yun lang. An hour after we tried it, biglang kumulo yung chan ko. Like, yung red alert. Emergency talaga. Mm-mm. So that happened. I went to the banyo and... My tummy was uncomfortable for the next eight hours, the whole night. Bonizi, however, had a different reaction. Yes. So, kung si Mikael eight hours, masakit yung chan niya. Ako eight days. Eight days. Guys, I had not experienced pain like this in my belly. Talo pa yung PMS? Talo pa yung dysmenorrhea? In some ways, yes. Oh, wow. Yes. There you have iba, it. Iba. Iba talaga. So... I mean, it's not something that we wanted to happen. Of course not. We, for us, like we just wanted to support lang naman. I think it was really just bad timing. Baka may nangyari lang sa delivery process. We don't know. So things like this do happen. And it's just so happened na nangyari sa akin. I had a really bad stomach flu. We consulted a doctor through online about it. And you know, I had to take medicine. I stayed in bed for three days. I was just in bed. I could not move because I was just like in and out of the room and the bathroom. To give you guys some gorier details, for Wait, the first, don't worry. Ma- okay. Yeah, don't worry. I got your bones. Okay. Okay. For the first 40 hours, Bonizi was literally in bed or in the banyo. She did not even go to the living room. She never made it to the studio. Those are the only two places she was stuck to. And it was sad for me to see that. It was so sad. I didn't play Ragnarok for three days. And just to, I mean, I, I know we, we talk about it lightly now, but during those first 40 hours, I was also scared because if she got too dehydrated or if the mm. pain was too overwhelming, I also considered that we might have to take her to the hospital, which is a scary proposition because yun nga, you're exposing yourself to so many more elements when you're in that setting. So it was definitely a more nerve wracking experience, but. Thankfully, now na nalampasan na ni Bones, we can talk about it lightly na. It was really bad timing lang talaga na nangyari yun. Yeah, and the lesson that we learned here is that, yes, it's great trying out all these different kinds of food. But when we thought about it kasi, 
some of these dishes they're coming from I don't know maybe 30 minutes away some mm -hmm. 45 minutes away from us and then they're being put inside um, the motorcycles yung lalagyan yeah. ng motorcycles sa likod so baka diba baka may nade-develop na ibang bacteria dun sa loob mm -hmm. or maybe the way the ingredients being used hindi natin kasanayan maybe it's super oily and we're not used to a lot of oil anymore yeah. so these were the pitfalls and some of the things that we have to be more aware of moving forward. And I think it's a learning experience since a lot of people are setting up, you know, home food businesses. It's a learning experience for all of us. Na I'm sure a lot of people are, you know, practicing, you know, good hygiene and all of that. But it's even more important now, of course, for all of us to be extra careful in anything that we do, diba? Yeah. So I guess just a quick recap. So I'm right now doing 2,100 calories and working out four to five times a day, uh, 30 minutes to 45 minutes per workout, depending if I'm feeling motivated. I eat chicken and potatoes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My snack is usually a pack of cookies. So yung presto cookies na tatlo yung piraso mm -mm. sa loob. Mm -mm. I have coffee in the morning. I have coffee in the afternoon. And usually there's room for a bit more dessert or a couple more fruits or a couple more snacks after the three meals and the cookies. So that's basically my health plan for the past eight months and my health plan moving forward. Bonizi, what's your calorie count? I was doing uh, 1,400 calories to 1,500 calories uh, a day. Now, I haven't been calorie counting only because I've been enjoying a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, and when you enjoy, not everything has um, calorie, like the nutrition facts on it. So I was like, ah, but ko pa ika calorie count to? Wala naman nakalagay. <laughs> so now I just try to eat relatively healthy and I'll have a couple of snacks here or there, probably have one to two cups of coffee in a day. But yeah, I try to indulge myself with things that I enjoy because it makes me happy. And before I got sick, I was actually doing a 1,000 burpee challenge. And I was supposed to do 100 burpees in 10 days. Thankfully, I was able to do 500. So when I'm feeling much better, then I'll do the rest. <laughs> And with that, I guess we get to the end of the episode. Yeah, we have our loaded question of the week. What is our loaded question? The loaded question of the week. Dun, 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 dun. How does the new normal affect our future in terms of health? Interesting. So aside from everything that we spoke about, um, adjusting our fitness routines to uh, to our home workouts, also adjusting our food habits and food plans i think the biggest change is how we've considered health insurance so yeah. bonizi and i don't have health insurance just yet mm -hmm. but now we've actually started talking to uh different companies just to see okay what are the, the actual uses yeah. and actual packages out there and do they fit our needs yeah and will it cover us if knock on wood that we get sick like what if we get the virus knock on wood oh my gosh yeah because so, i've never been to the hospital i haven't been to the hospital or i haven't been hospitalized since i started working bonizi has been ho hospitalized once maybe I, when i had my appendix removed yeah but that was it so luckily enough we haven't really had the need for it mm -hmm. but moving forward since um issues in the whole world are what they are it seems like the more responsible thing to do to at least consider it and yeah. study it and see if it'll fit our lifestyle. Also, syempre, like moving forward, uh, we're planning on having kids in the future. That's also one thing that Ooh, we need to consider. Interesting. Kinilig ka? Kailang, kailang. <laughs> All right. And with that, we are ending our episode for today. But of course, paalala lang, Oh So Healthy is actually celebrating their third anniversary this coming October 1. Their tribute to health and their objective is to increase awareness on giving importance about our health, especially now sa pandemic. Okay? So Oh So Healthy will be sharing the goodness by giving discounts and goodies. Mm -hmm. And of course, to support them, we've been mentioning it. Please, please follow them on Facebook and on Instagram their handle is at I'm oh so healthy and at the same time you need to follow these accounts if you want to join the oh so healthy giveaway yes all you have to do is answer the question in the comments section and the question is if you had the chance to create your own flavor of oh so healthy crisp 
what would it be and why the more creative the better of course and of okay, course so that's three uh, that's a three flavor combination you can get creative we also want to see some really really nice and fun justifications mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. why you pick those three flavors so just enjoy it and go wild and with that we're ending the podcast with a little ASMR we'll see you guys next time bye bye <laughs>